Hello, it's me. And I'm on your screen, right in the middle, probably. I doubt you full screened it because uh, this is just a, ca a camera shot of me, so I wouldn't full screen this. But I, I am here. You clicked on a video. And I was recently coached by TI winner Arkosh Demon Extraordinaire Aoi2069. Uh, and this coaching session was extremely enlightening. This guy talked about a bunch of concepts that I had legitimately never heard of. And every single time I talk to somebody of his caliber, this always happens. I think I know a lot about the game. And then I very quickly realize that I know almost nothing. So hopefully this will be just as enlightening for you. But first, Shout outs to these guys over here who uh, have subscribed to the channel and have received a couple of Dragon Claw hooks. So if you want to receive some free stuff, make sure to sub. That's all it takes. But uh, anyway, without further ado, let's get right into it. Hello, YouTube. I'm over here and very, uh, very small on the screen. There's this guy here as well. Hello. Get your hands off your face and say hello. Sorry, I had to burp. I won't burp into my mic. Hi, just, guys. Just let it out. He's going to coach me uh, through Team Arkosh's replays because I personally have an affinity with the Gremlo player. Uh, I just really like his gameplay, and I believe that everything that Gremlo does is 100% correct. And so that's why he's going to be coaching me. If he slips up and says you whenever he's talking about Gremlo, it's going to be a mistake. Uh, in this video so genius aui underscore 2000 that's me calls for a smoke with a ward we kill morphling my uh the stupid mid player skills up remnant which i think ruins his lane a bit he didn't need that we we're just gonna roll on him get first blood but unfortunately it goes onto pale horse anyway so we've killed morphling now and now viper he, it's, he's not guaranteed to have a good lane yet he has good items i think some stats calling blade good regen we place a ward and we realize, oh, maybe we can just kill Morphling again because Morphling is just a pathetic level one hero. We go, we kill him. And this is really big. So my TV gets canceled, but the lane isn't in too bad of a position and it's sort of a 1v1 versus Universe Dragonite. So we don't care too much. The other thing that's happened here is that the lane has gone to the tower. As soon as this goes into tower, they miss uh, two creeps of EXP. We, they, we should all understand on Dyer's side here that they have completely lost lane equilibrium. It's just going to stand over here. So we go over to the side. We block camps. And we kill Morphling again here, right? So at this point, my fucking courier gets late. <laughs> Our job should be, we want to just keep this up here. Mirana's TP top, so maybe we can TP it here to match him. But basically the idea is we want to keep the lane here. So one thing that should have happened in this lane is that because we have the camps blocked and we have the lane so far back, uh, Gremlin should have been using his Quelling Blade to chop these trees. Because the only way they're going to get, like, some access to us is through these trees in the side. Like, oh, can I see. He I can, see. you know, batter us with the Visage. But otherwise, like, the lane should stay up here. This lane also needs to be balanced a bit. You want it to the point where this lane is standing here, but not pushing in. Because right now, they can fight us, right? They have two range creeps. Mm -hmm. So right now, the best option is, like, we should both be right-clicking down this creep. We as in Gremlo and, uh, and Aoi 2000. Yeah, okay. yeah. Like, I'm talking, I you see. know, because just from our perspective, my perspective, I just say we because I'm laning with this yeah, guy. Naturally, yeah, of course. Makes yeah. sense. Okay, so here, I think Gremlo's playing like a little cock, to be honest. He's standing, like, up here. So we get this denied. He's holding the wave here. When this wave meets, Gremlo needs to aggressively position over here and take the CS from this side because he's playing, like, this clockwork deserves any of this EXP he got. So this is hmm. a big deal, actually. Because right now, clockwork's getting EXP for these creeps. Or he should be, right? Like, it's only a Vista zoning him. If, I if see. Gremlo's standing here, then we can full zone, and you can get the same CS. Yeah. See, look look at this. Like, this guy should... he should If he caught Ox's side here, he should be zoned out this way. The fact that, like, he's almost level 3 right now is actually really bad for the lane, because of how okay. dominant it is. I see, so I it's, see. So it's about, like, knowing how your strength is, right? It's still really good, but there's two things that have gone wrong so far from Gremlo right now. We're three minutes in, you know, it's 3 to 0 Morphling has one CS... But I'm not. I'm actually not happy with the state of this lane. The first thing is, Gremlo hasn't bought any mangles, so even though we're dominating the lane, we don't actually have like kill threat. If we had kill threat, we could stand here as two heroes and again full zone them from EXP. Stand here until the creep wave comes, get the CS, like you know, stand it from here, get the CS, and a full zone them. And when the creep wave comes back, we just come back, wait patiently, get every deny, and come back here. Morphling should not get any EXP, and Clockwork actually shouldn't get any EXP. 
And if we're positioning aggressively, Visage would have been able to come over here and block another small camp. I think just generally early boots in a lane where you're dumpstering, you don't really need stats, is really yeah. good. Like, so th the reason why you buy stats is to contest last hits, right? You need to. But damage. if they, yeah, but if they aren't contesting, what's the point? Exactly. Okay, I, I see. mean, you play a last hit trainer. It doesn't matter if you have 25 damage. You will get last hits unless you're very bad at the game. Like, I yeah. mean, at this level, you, you'll get every last hit. Yeah. So yeah, I, I would have put like boots into with a couple mangoes into urn, and after that, you should tank up because once you won the lane. You want to make sure they can't kill you. But like, I think this nether toxin is pretty bad. It's specifically important here because your wagon is spawning. So this wagon, with the lane going this badly from Orphling, should kill this tower. And how that works is if the lane meets here with the wagon, you kill the range creep and you slow you, push. Okay. You, you'll get a triple wave because it's, it's wagon versus wagon and they can't touch the creeps. Like if you go into a custom game, you make the lane start here for the wagon waves, you kill the enemy range creep and don't hit anything but last hits, you will literally have... 10 creeps hit the tower when it goes and the tower will just die because the next wave will the next wave will meet with the melees right yes exactly like range creeps do double the damage of melee creeps while being half as tanky so if you only kill the range creep it makes your wave push very slowly huh, which that... buys time for the next wave to come that's an that's an interesting like way of putting it too like slow pushing by killing the range creep like in order to build up a like momentum of creep waves. I, I've, ne I've literally never done that before. That's it's cool. It's something I actually, I came up with something like this because I play on like Cloud9 or the team before, like Arasent, and I'd be Crystal Maiden and I'd be trying to take the tower alone because people were really bad back then. So I'd be alone in the enemy offlane and I couldn't take the tower. Like I would push in the wave and then I hit the tower and it'd do like 200 damage. So I figured out is like, if I got the wave back, this is like in 2013, if I got, or 2014, if I got the wave back, killed the range creep and the slow pushed it i would i would do like a thousand plus damage to a tower in one double wave this kill on clockwork was really bad for this lane because morphling is actually having a game now like we're, we're trying to dive him we're trying to pressure the tower but your objective in this lane is to kill the tower at this point it's not really to i mean you want to zone him here but you want to zone him in a way that gets you the tower because you're too strong you need to draw attention from your other lanes. We have a Void Spirit versus Puck mid who had to take Remnant first. The default assumption is that he's not doing that well. He is because I think he's outskilling Ask. But and then top lane, I'm pretty sure Pale Horse should be having a way better lane than this, but he's not. For some reason, no one has farmed top lane. Neither hero. It's Luna versus DK. It's a good lane. Did I miss Pale Horse? Oh my god. Maybe I have to watch the replay of Pale Horse. <laughs> Maybe. I mean, I'm not an Arkosh anymore, so there's no, there's no yeah, reason, there's no like, reason to yeah. me and of course. my family. So. Like the reason we're watching this is to make fun of them. That's that's why. Yeah, that's true. They're just so terrible, bad humans. Et right. So Gremlo at this point, he's he's winning this lane super hard, right? Morphling is 1500. There's no pull for him. He can't really do anything, but he's still pushing the wave in for some reason. So we're getting this pull off, but the thing is, when you push this wave in, I think it gives Morphling an opportunity to come back into his lane. Like, look, he's he's getting, how dare he get a range creep? You know, how dare he get all these melee creeps? What the, why are you guys, why are you guys so scared? It's because Puck is missing, right? Yeah, I see him there, so Puck is on here. So the, the reason why you guys are scared, though, is because it's not in front of your tower. Like, you can, we can sort of imagine a scenario where Gremlo had held equilibrium. Here, I right? see. You're Instead right. of pushing this and pulling, if the wave is just here, they cannot kill Viper in the tower. Earth Spirit's just going to go on the side or stop them from pulling. Maybe Puck rotates and coils an Earth Spirit, but he doesn't care, right? They don't have any other kill today. If Clockwork goes on, he'll kick him away and roll. Instead, this is a big catch up for Morphling. Like, he's been so sacked this game. We just lowered the neutral creeps for him with Nether Toxin. He gets the last on that one, and all of a sudden. Like, that was, that was literally a 33% increase in net worth for him because of a bad move that Gremlo did here. Mm. But for me, like, the biggest thing is still, this tower, in a lane that got absolutely dumpstered, it took 450 damage from the wagon, which is, like, honestly, it's not acceptable for how much resources Arkosh put into this bottom lane, right? With the mm -hmm. tri-lane, with everything. Like, the reward for the team should have been, this tower dies... And then Luna can like TP down here because her lanes are hard. Start pulling these camps to get equilibrium. Push this out. Pull the camp. Push this out. And she'll power farm. Meanwhile, Viper, because this tower is dead, is freed up. He's just going to come top and lane versus DK. Viper plus Visage will kill DK at any point in the game because it's too much magical damage. This lane for Arkosh, despite it going well, didn't actually result in any reward other than net worth. Hmm. Like you have a net worth swing on Morphling versus Viper, but you don't have any map control from it. You don't have any snowball onto the other lanes. See that that's Morphling's interesting. Morphling's actually really happier. 
when I when I coach people, I'll often tell them that like getting kills for just net worth is terrible. Um, and this is kind of an extension of that, except well, I guess it's the same thing, but it's yeah. it's like it's like in laning. Like winning a lane for just net worth is not necessarily good. Like you can get more off of it. I you mean can... you have you can't skip steps, right? You need to build up the net worth advantage first, right? Yeah. But having a big net worth or power advantage, because it's not just a net worth advantage, it's just a hero matchup as well. It needs to lead to something more meaningful than ten more CS than your opponent. Just gold, right? yeah, yeah. If Viper is stronger right now, Arkosh would have brought four heroes to mid, Luna would have already like fucked off to bottom and pushed us in. We would have formed a shield for our Luna to farm, right? Because we're gonna occupy this area. Luna's gonna form all of this for free. This mid tower's gonna die. And it will actually die this game before top tower dies. Because the mid wagon hits mid tower before the top wagon hits top tower. Right? The lane is shorter. Mm -hmm. So then we can kill this tower. Either we take a team fight here, which should be really good for us based on our power levels this game. Maybe even Luna could TP in, provide some aura, and then push this tower. Or and then defend this tower. Or we just kill this tower and we maybe defend this tower, maybe not. Well, we're happy anyways. We've taken two towers. Our map control looks amazing right now. And then we're happy, but you know, I've never thought about that before. Actually, the fact that the wagon mid hits before the wagon in the side lanes, so you can take mid and then defend, or you can we like still... defend mid and then defend. Like you defending mid should almost always defending or taking mid should hypothetically like almost always come first. Yeah, I think maybe like four or five years ago, competitive players started all going for the enemy safe lane. It was on C deck, right? They would mm -hmm. go dive the safe lane, the console of dead lane came up. The counterplay of that was when they went for a safe lane tower, you would just all go for their mid tower. Because, you know, what's worth more than a safe lane tower? But we don't get to defend top tower, and it happens like much slower than it would have. And Luna gets less farm. And I don't know what this build was from Pale Horse. I feel like if he's just going to farm, he should just max Glaives. If he's going to come to a fight, then he can max Blessing. And he should have come hit this tower, because then we would have been able to defend top for sure. Viper and Voicebear are really strong right now. Anywhere they go together, the opponent cannot like play at all. And that's an important concept because the most important area of the map is going to be the mid lane. Because if you control the mid lane, you can go anywhere on the map the fastest. So you also force in the wave the fastest because the mid lane is the shortest lane. So if you're controlling this lane, standing here, you know, some Voicebear here with Visage and Viper behind him, farming, stealing their camps. The enemy has very reduced amount of plays they can do. Meanwhile, Earth Spirit, and not Visage, because Earth Spirit's the fastest support. He can walk like this, get all the EXP here, and get really fat. And for the fight, he'll just TP and join the fight really quickly. So that's why Earth Spirit goes top here. So Viper, farm this. Maybe a ward here for him, farming these three camps. So can you, can you, can you, pause, can you pause for a second? So yeah. essentially what you're saying is they did none of this. <laughs> Like, they did yeah. none of this. <laughs> okay. So, Earth Spirit top because Void Spirit and Viper need to be paired together because they're so the two strongest pillars of the TP, team. This TP from Canis Vulpus is literally one of the worst things I've seen in Dota. Because he picks up a Hastron, which makes him a big boss on the map. And then he TPs to a side lane where he's absolutely worthless. So, I remember in the comms, I was telling someone to go top. And... I said Earth Spirit, I believe. And then he Canis Vulpus TP'd, and I wanted to say something, but I didn't because Arkosh is a joke team. So Okay, I see. Because so the idea is like Voice Spirit has Haste Rune. He's super powerful. If he stays off the map, like look at where they're all huddled right now. We can farm all of this right now. This is all Arkosh's. Right? Yeah. Like it, it's it's seventy percent of the map, which is what happens when you're up two towers versus one. You get seventy percent of the map in terms of like creep space. So instead, Canis Vulpus uses his fucking best rune in the game to run from the safe lane to mid. What the hell is this? I mean, I didn't watch this replay before. He uses his haste rune to farm the creep wave. Thanks. Instead, because our formation's broken, right? Our two strongest heroes need to be together. Probably with Visage. I, Visage is, I'm going way out of position here. And one support can sort of go top and control this. It's not too bad. But then Ursa needs to be here. You guys, like, what is this? We're running back in our jungle. We should just be standing, controlling mid lane together. One support can block the smoke, and we farm these camps. I mean, it's it's a default. It's not like a hard rule, right? If you see something that breaks it, or you get information where this tower is being hit, maybe you should back up a little bit. Take the high ground. Sit on there. You know? Yeah. We see top lane. No one's there. Okay, we back up a little bit. 
Instead, what happens is our formation is so bad because there are three idiots sitting defensively in our jungle that they just come in and they kill our top network hero. And this is this is battle Gremlo in the fact that he's staying here without any assistance. But honestly, it's a team move where our cost, like we abandoned this area. When we go up here, like morons, our spirit, visage, and voice spirit, Gremlo needs to read the map and say, mm -hmm. like, holy shit, no one is here for me. I need to get out. Yeah. This is a bad death, but it's because of the team and because of Gremlo. It's never like a solo thing. And it's also because the items are fucking Pepe sus. Right now, he should have Dragonlance Ogre Axe, and he should be going towards BKB. As soon as he gets BKB this game, this game is like... He's, he's going to get BKB Shard, and literally Roshan will die in 10 seconds because of the Shard, and then these towers are dead, and we will siege high ground. This, yeah. this game, in my opinion, should be over at 25 minutes. They're really outdrafted, and they lost lanes. So yeah. yeah so that... now this game's sort of gotten hard. Our Luna is not very farmed, to be honest. Luna should have maybe a thousand more net worth if... Luna went for a higher farming build, 241, and then actually played for it. Got to use this earlier with the tower push. Honestly, I think Luna should be 2,000 higher right now. This is really underfarmed. Uh, Visage feeds top. This is a bad death by me. And then we we tried to catch the mid, which, I mean, it works out pretty well. See, you know, Viper's to, showing his strength. To me, the fact that this game is even close to even right now means we've already, uh, of course, we being getting into the minds of their Arkosh players, those players fucked up already. Because, like, there's no way, given how the lanes went, given how Morphling was level... It was 1 CS to 20 and then 10 denies, even with all the mistakes that were made. Still, to me, it's like, if this is a pub, somebody on black and yellow is down mid. Legitimately. Yeah, like, no, they're, they're, they're done. Abandoned. I mean, they, that's the problem with NA pubs too, right? Because NA pubs, I think they're trash because people give up way too easily. In a C pub, this would like if all of Arkosh were C players, they would have known how to play this game from both sides. I don't think Black and Yellow did a good job this game either, to be honest. They had no idea what to do to get the Morphin back into the game. Pale Horse, he's just he's been farming for literally twelve minutes, but there's no moves. This is like sort of the difference. Like if you see one of the Artezis or like the top carry players, they'll never play like this anymore. It's it's a very outdated style of carry. Just like Battle Fury or so. Exactly. Like, the, the concept behind Battle for Ursa when you're the only one who's farmed is, is really conceptually bad. But the problem here is that this lane is pushed to the tower, and we are farming Ancients, so that means we get no map control. What should have happened during this play is that BS... Uh... <laughs> Pale Horse. So right now, what happens is we have this fight here, and honestly, in my head when we are playing this game, I thought Luna was pushing down this lane. And we are getting so much from this fight. We're just 4v5ing them. But then Luna came over, and I was like, what the fuck is ha Why is there a Luna here? I mean, the idea here is if you're going to be a piece of shit and just farm, you have to push waves in. Otherwise, you're giving nothing to your team. The reason why... Like, it, it's also more farm. Like, one creep wave is more than one ancient camp, which I think most player carry players don't realize. Like, it's just faster farming, and it's a better play to push mm -hmm. waves. And, you know, our top never Viper again dies, her most valuable player, the Visage, dies. They kill three heroes, and all of a sudden, like... This lane pressure is still not coming in. They get to respawn and all come here. What should have happened is this lane should have been all the way in here. When they respawn, someone should have to come here or they should lose economy on the map. Like mm -hmm. Luna in this game. Damn, you're popular. If if he would have focused on farming, I think Luna would be 15. Like, uh, he would have been like 13k at 20 minutes. I, yeah. I think that's normal. I think if you're free farm, you get 14k at 20 minutes on Luna. That's That's the standard. So again, anyways, most of the rest of the game, like, there's not that much point talking about it because the yeah, items are just too bad. I agree. Like, we need we need Dragonlance BKB. At this point, like, Luna's BKB, but the fights the fights are just hard. Like, we, we still win these fights because Visage is really good against some of the heroes like Dragonite. And a really good player, too, yeah. Yeah, and a, a, just a really handsome, so really handsome. well closed yeah. player. Really nice clothes. But again, sure. like, this net worth on the supports matters a lot this game. Like, imagine if Crow had gone this top lane. Like 500 sub net worth early on your support will translate into a lot later.